Hello and welcome back everyone! In this video series I'm going to show you how you can create this little fluffy guy. In the last part we already started the modeling and we basically finished that. So in this part we're going to look at how we can add some hair and specifically I want to show you how you can add hair only to specific areas. So for example we don't want any hair in the mouth or over the eye. So I'm going to show you how to do that and then I'm also going to show you how you can adjust the hair settings. And before we're going to do that, I just wanted to um, change a little bit the size of this model. So I wanted the head to be kind of bigger in respectivity to the body. So what I'm doing here is just selecting the body and then scaling it down. Um, and you can scale it down to the origin, so it basically stays on the ground. And then you can just move the head afterwards. All right, so with the head down, I of course also have to move the eyes and the antennas again, same like the toes. Um, so just make sure everything is in position, but you can always position that also, of course, later on. And then we can start adding the hair. And like I said, we don't want the hair to be everywhere, so we're going to make use of a vertex group. So just swap into the object data properties and add a new vertex group. You can also give it a name like hair, um, but we're just going to have one, so it doesn't really matter like if you rename it or not. Okay, now to swap into edit mode, and then you basically want to select all the faces um, that should have hair. And the great thing is you can also change that later on. So here I'm just in the X-ray mode, so all set. And then you can just select all the faces and then on the right side, click assign. This will basically assign these faces to this vertex group. So we're gonna do the same thing with the head, but on the head, of course, we don't want any hair inside the eye and we don't want any hair inside the mouth. So when you're selecting these faces, you want to make sure that you don't have any faces that are um, inside those two areas. When you have all the faces selected you want, you can click on assign and you don't have to select them all at once. So you can always just click on them, assign and then select the next one you want to assign to them and it will add it to the previous ones. So as soon as you got them all, you maybe want to make sure that you have the right faces. So what you can do is just click somewhere, so nothing is selected, and then click on the select button. And that way you will see what faces this vertex group is actually assigned to. Yeah, so here I'm just double checking, making sure there's nothing in the mouth and also nothing in the eye. All right, from the mouth you can see we have quite a square around it and um, it's, Probably not a big deal, but we can change that. So I just added another loop cut in the middle and then pulled down the outside corners a little bit towards the mouth, so pressing G twice to move it more on the inside and making this kind of border around the mouth where we don't want any um, hair around it. So with the right faces in the vertex group, we can change into the particle settings. And here you can just create with a plus sign a new particle system. Um, so you can see, for example, here for me, it shows on the hand, there's a nice little blob. This is our particle. And we just want to change these to hair. And you can see now we have beautiful hair around our little guy. Um, now, obviously this isn't perfect yet. And you can also see that right now they're like way too long and not really a lot. So we just want to change some settings here. So a lot of these settings, uh, I would say are good to just play around with. So if you're not sure what they're doing, you know, just drag along a lot um, and increase or decrease the numbers just to see how they're doing. So the first thing we want to change is the length and the number. So increase the number a little bit. It still doesn't look perfect, I know, but we can change that. And then in the bottom of the settings, we have a setting called vertex group with the field density. And if you add our vertex group there, so you can just click it from a drop down menu, uh, you will see that there are now no more hairs in the eye or the mouth. So that's perfect also. All right, so next up we wanna enable the advanced options, which gives us a lot more options to adjust the hairs. And the first thing you might want to do is go into the children tab and click on interpolate it. So this will basically add to each of those hair strands we have before, child elements and that will make it already a lot more fluffy. So here for the numbers you have one time the display amount and one time the render amount. Now the display amount especially like if your computer isn't that great you might want to keep that low and then the render amount you keep it a little bit higher. 
All right, so for these children settings, we can also change the length. And right now it looks like it just adjusts the length of all of them. But if you also change the threshold underneath, you will see that that will um, basically adjust how many of the children will have a different length. And this gives your hair some nice variation to it. So just play around with these values until you find um, some nice variation between the actual hair and the child hair that might be a little bit longer. All right, then we have a few more settings that we want to adjust because right now they all, basically all the hairs do their own thing. And then there's the clumping section and that will basically bundle the hairs into strands. Now, if you go extreme, you can see that that looks quite funny. I mean, depending on what you want to go for, you can go for it. Uh, but if you just add a little bit of it, it will give it more natural look. So we all kind of have those strands in our hair. It's just kind of not that extreme. And then underneath there, there's also the section of roughness. And that will add more curls and waves to your hair. And with these, these settings, as you can see, you can make some really funny looking uh, adjustments and go really extreme. And I would just suggest just try them all out, see how they affect your model and um, yeah, just, just play around with them. So uh, as you can see, I'm just going over them all, seeing how they all can affect the model and what funny things you can create with them. I will make a screenshot of my final settings and add them to the website. So if you just want to see what settings I went with in the end, you can either see in the blend file I upload in the end um, or in the screenshot below. All right, so we have the hair is now looking a little bit more like hair. Um, we're getting there, but we still want to add some more variation. So you can switch into the particle edit mode and here you can further refine your hair. So for example, what we could do is say, okay, the hands, the arms and the legs, they don't really need that long hair. So on the left side, you can see different options like cut, length, puff. And if you go for the length, you can swap here between grow and shrink. And just with the grow brush, we can basically paint over it and just adjust the size of the length. So for example, here I'm going over the legs and the arms because I'm saying like, okay, this, this doesn't have to be that long. And you don't even need to draw a tablet because like the amount of hair we have, it doesn't really matter if you're like um, not really precise. So you don't need to do it really precise. You can really just roughly go over it. And the only thing, a thing I would say is just make sure you're going over it from different angles. So make sure you, you rotate the model and you have it from all different angles because it can look really strange if like on the back side there's something like a really long hair strand while on the front side it's really short. What I also like to do is use the comp brush to pull the hair a little bit downward so it more looks like there's actually some gravity. If you use the comp brush, it's normally like really strong, so you can change the strength. But what I like to do is just first comp them in the right direction and then use the puff brush afterwards to give them some puffiness again. So here I'm just gonna go over it like the head, just adjusting a little bit and then choosing the puff brush and then giving them that nice puffiness again. So you can repeat that a couple of times or just like maybe it already looks nice from the first time and just keep on going over it from all different angles. All right, as soon as you're happy with the lengths, here I'm also just removing some more hair around the mouth, uh, you can swap back into the normal object mode to take a look at it. And right now, as you may see, it, it, it looks nice. We, we're getting there, but as you can see, it still does not look really like hair. So you can refine the settings a little bit more, but there's actually one setting in the render settings that will also have a big effect on the hair. So if you go into the render settings and then underneath there is a section called hair and there you can change the hair type. So the hair shape type is either strand or strip. Known default it's on strand, but you can change that to strip. What this will do, it will basically make the end of the hair more thinner than the root of the hair and it will give it a way more realistic look. And you can adjust that even more. So if you go back into the particle settings, there is uh, one section called hair shape. And there you can see that you can change the diameter of 
the base towards the top and then you can make this really clumpy look maybe that's something you want to go for your model that's also fine so for this one i just want to have this really thin hair so i'm basically just going to leave it like that and want the end to be really thin so it looks nice and fluffy and this is basically it all you need to know um, in the end, I went a little bit more over the feet and the mouth, just shrinking the hair a little bit so it's shorter around those areas. Um, I think that makes quite some sense. So just see um, what suits your model. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope I'll see you in the next part where we're going to take a look at how we can paint the hair so it has different colors. So for example, the belly have a little bit more whiter color and the whole rest of the body is more blue or whatever color you want to go for. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. And of course, subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next part.